You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week, we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I do want to know more about where my tax dollars are going, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. Well, this week is the first of a two-part episode where I'm very happy to welcome for an extended conversation, Town of Hempstead Supervisor Don Clavin. Mr. Clavin, welcome to this week's Long Island News. Hey, Bill. How you doing? How are you? And how are your listeners? Hope everyone's doing well. Yes, I hear you. For 2023, right? Um, Absolutely. We haven't had the giant snowstorm yet. I, I, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, hey, listen, I shouldn't do that, let's right? Start, <laughs> listen, let's start it off right for all the listeners. Don't jinx any of us, okay? Well, you know, it, we either talk about the snow or the water because, <laughs> they, they, you know, um, and that's been uh, that's been a wild thing in the last couple of years. Well, last year, uh, remember all that the, the flooding in Roslyn and, and some of those places where you just never expected that to happen. Yeah, and and you know what? Look at um, look what happened just in December twenty third uh, this year. Uh, there the the floods down the South Shores. It was uh, it was scary and and it was it was devastating for so many people. I I, I was driving down there and we'd warned people about the the flooding that was coming. And some people prepared and some didn't. I mean, I, I, I was talking to residents who, you know, their, their cars were underwater, their, their basements flooded, their Christmases were destroyed. Uh, you know what? And, 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 and it's heartfelt. And, and it, what was, was great was I teamed up with our local congressman, Anthony D'Esposito, and we're asking, uh, for a declaration, uh, you know, down there. So maybe some of these uh, residents could be available for federal funding to reimburse them for their, for their losses. Wow. Wow. Now, you know, when you, when you see things like that, is it a one-time event or are we talking about a trend? Is this going to be the future for us? You know what? I think this is, this is going to be long-term. Uh, you know, the, the, unfortunately you, you, you have seen changes uh, in the climate. You've seen changes in tides. Uh, you know what? Uh, Mother nature has her own will. Uh, and mm. particularly for residents on the South shore who have always been prone uh, to flooding, they've seen it. Let it be from the superstorm, you know, a decade ago to, to most recently. Um, you know, people have lost a lot and, uh, you know, people are learning. People are preparing. People are really paying attention when we give them a warning. Like we had one the other night uh, for flash flooding uh, in the South Shore. And I really think residents took it to heart uh, yeah. and they prepared. Uh, we did in the town. We, in fact, in some of our uh, low lying uh, you know, municipal yards, we actually took our equipment and moved it to higher ground to avoid uh, any, any losses. And I noticed people took it to heart too. So it's a combination, you know, nature is going to do what it wants, but residents have to to join in and and be prepared. Yeah. I think one of the downsides, and it's just from my personal experience is uh, when a pending snowstorm or a pending storm becomes a news story. And I think that works against us and especially (laughs) you when you go out to give people a warning, you know, and then a storm is approaching and it's this big news story and it doesn't happen. When I, I'm already looking 10 days out. I can tell you what the weather's like next week. And I will tell all your listeners that, you know, next, next Tuesday could be a little snow and rain mix and maybe next Thursday. So I'm, I'm, I'm always 10 days out, but it's, I am of the mindset that if there's a storm coming five days beforehand, I am definitely filling my cars up with gas. I'm, I've, I've got a couple of essentials in the house because, and more of a concern for me is like, I'm not going to be here because, you know, I've, I have responsibilities. Oh, and yeah. when there's a storm, I like, I, I'm out, you know, checking areas. Uh, but when I tell people, you know, if we're warning you, it, it's for a reason and, and don't wait until that. Don't don't go out in the middle of a blizzard and get some milk and eggs right. you know, for you know, for, for twenty dollars. It's so expensive now. But but I said, you know, right. when when we're warning it, everyone should take it seriously. And for the most part, people really people are great all around. They understand it and and they work with us. Yeah, I, you have a you have a good point when you say that, you know, if a storm is coming, you have a standard operating procedure. This yep. is what we do. Uh, uh, you know, doesn't matter if it does happen or if it doesn't happen, this, you know, uh, and that's a good idea, you know, to yeah. have a, to have a plan and to, you know, yeah. I don't know why, I don't know how eggs and bread help, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, people seem to get some kind of security from stocking up on eggs and bread. Uh, you know, apparently there's a lot of French toast in the morning and I will say <laughs> I have noticed a, a spike in red wine in the evening. I'm, I'm just, it's just something I did notice. That's, you know, for your listeners. Yeah, a lot of toast, a lot of toast. I get that. Um, 
Well, you know what? I have a, a couple of topics here. So uh, anyway, it's been uh, been over a year since we've had the since you and I've had the chance to talk about everything happening in the town. Um, yep. uh, so let's let's start where it counts, right in the wallet. Uh, back in October, Newsday reported uh, you proposed a five hundred four million dollar budget for two thousand twenty three uh, that will freeze property taxes, and that'd be the third consecutive year that the town has either frozen or reduced the property taxes. What's what's the latest on that? Did you get everything you proposed, and yeah. are are the taxes frozen? You know they are. Um, you know, and I'm happy to say since you know the, the residents gave me the opportunity to be supervisor, uh, we've either cut or frozen taxes. Uh, you know what? Uh, we've we've gone through a, a, a time where we got in and uh, we've we w- had the pandemic. Uh, the town board, our our entire co-workers, and I mean it, uh, our, uh, all the people who work in the town have done a, a tremendous job. Uh, we were able to to put the budget together. Um, and look, it's it's difficult times out here. Like, you know, we've seen mag- you know significant inflation. I mean, I uh, you know, all joking aside, you know, I do do the primary shopping in my house. I enjoy mm-hmm. grocery shopping. And look, I've I know my budget. I know how the prices have gone up from, you know, yeah, right. my milk at 249 up to 479, how my eggs uh, have gone up fr- from gas. We were able to secure yet another, um, you know, tax freeze. And the, the also the benefit, wa- benefit was at the same time we did the tax freeze, we were actually rewarded with a triple A bond rating, which is the highest rating you can get. Mm. Um, the town is actually have a, as the highest bond rating of, of all the municipalities in New York state. We're higher than New York city. We're, we're higher than the state's rating and we're higher than the counties. Um, and that's because I think we run a really fiscally tight ship. We work together. Um, I have a town board, um, you know, of, of just really good people. Uh, we listen to the residents and, and you know what? We were rewarded and that reward uh, benefits the, the residents because when you get such a bond rating, when you borrow, you know, you can actually make a tremendous savings. Um, and our controller, John Masterino, does a, does a great job. Uh, and I, and again, I recognize the hardships of living on Long Island and wherever you are and, and how expensive it is here. And I do say to people, your town taxes account anywhere from nine to 12 percent of all your taxes mm. uh, and you get a lot for it. You get your parks, you get your roads, you get your beaches, uh, you, let, you get, you know, the good departments we have in the town. Um, and and we're, we're proud of it. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, we are already looking in 2023. Uh, we're going to have yet another tax freeze coming down the road where right. we went through the numbers. We feel very confident. And that's what our intention is for this year as well. Right. Right. You know, um, there's um, these these things called industrial development agencies. Um, and, and someone made the point uh, a little while ago that I was having a conversation with that basically the, the idea that because industrial development agencies exist, it should tell us that the tax base is a little screwed up because yep. if it wasn't screwed up and it made sense. We wouldn't need IDAs to, because people read this in the paper all the time. And the last big one that I can think of was when Amazon wanted to move into Queens and local policymakers were ready to give them, I don't know, what was it? $20 billion, uh, you know, get out of jail free card. And of course the citizenry, you know, their hackles went up, uh, rightfully so. Um, and then on Long Island in general, we have this, uh, and the one company I can think of, well, uh, you know, TV advertisements about we'll get you a tax right off. And um, and most of those companies, they may get you a savings, but then that's what they take to do it. So I, I don't know where uh, the benefit is for the individual. Um, uh, so, you know, it is kind of a kind of crazy. But is there ever a way to really redo? I mean, we talk about reassessment and all. Yeah, OK. Uh, but it's it's never really been done effectively, has it? Uh, you know what? It, it hasn't. I, before I became the supervisor, I, I spent uh, uh, about 18 years as the uh, most popular receiver of taxes in the town of Hempstead <laughs> at that time. Um, and actually, I, I made it my mission um, to to show people how to challenge their assessment themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, good for these companies, but they they charge you 50 percent fee. I, I always told people, why are you paying somebody 50 percent when you could do it yourself? Right. And we would we would hold forums. And we had I, I think we reached uh, you know over 10,000 people had shown up. And we showed them how to do it. Mm-hmm. They recognized it wasn't that complicated. They could do it either in paper or do it online. Right. And they do it every single year. Right. Um, and, and they appreciate it. And it was, it was something they did. The, you've had a number of, uh, people who, you know, talked about modifying assessment. Un- unfortunately, um, we recently had the, the county controller did an audit of the, uh, the previous administration's 
uh, cha- changes to the assessment, and she pointed out significant errors that were that were made. Mm-hmm. So it really didn't benefit, uh, you know, the residents. Right. It actually hurt a lot of people, and and everybody remembers along the lines and uh, along the way that you know you had new houses that were you know barely paying any taxes somehow, and older houses were paying more. Mm-hmm. Um, look, the system needs a, a true reset, yeah. um, and it's going to have to be a combination of the counties, the towns, and the state. Uh, lending a little support. Uh, but until then, I just tell people, look, you challenge your assessment every single year. The worst thing that will happen to you is you get denied. Right. You right. get denied. Right. The best thing is you challenge it yourself, you get a reduction, and you get to keep your money. Right. And, and when you when you touch base on the IDAs, look, you know, residents, rightfully so, you know, have concerns about IDAs and giving benefits to businesses. Uh, most recently, um, you know, we we did a proposal where we uh, and our and the the IDA acknowledged it. Um, we didn't want them giving tax benefits to uh, to uh, I guess it was wind power plants. You know, they're coming here and and again, you look what happened at Poor Island Park. You know, the residents down there um, are sig- going to be facing significant uh, tax increases because uh, the you know the, the IDA really hurt them. We we've got to protect people. At the same time, unfortunately, you have other states. That, that are, you know, are coming in and, and stealing businesses and, and literally they're doing it by mm-hmm. saying, you're going to save X amount of money here. Right. And if you, if you leave, you know, come to our, our state, um, you'll save a significant amount of money. Uh, and these companies look at it and, and the IDAs are trying to find, you know, means to, to keep them here because they're saying, well, yeah, but you know, there's, there's more to it. You know, there's the, you know, the, the, the they live here, they pay taxes, they shop here, they pay tax. That's great, but it's a delicate balance. And I, and, and I think the real purpose is, are you really creating jobs? Are you, that, that's always been my thing. The, the purpose is, is to create and retain jobs here. And that's something we have to monitor to make sure that is being done properly. All right. Right. Well, that's a big one. That's, uh, that's tough. Uh, well, theoretically, construction jobs on Long Island should either maintain or, or get better depending on what new developments. Well, so now it's been three years since the, uh, the start of the pandemic and, you were pretty outspoken when the vaccine came out by offering the Vax Mobile and bringing shots to the people in the town. Uh, more recently, um, you have a Pax Mobile bringing an- the antiviral drug Paxlovid to residents. Um, what's the latest on the town's response to the pandemic, and wh- where are we at? It seems get it seems like it's getting weird now. Uh, <laughs> you know, one guy gets it in the crowd, nobody else does. Nobody tests positive. We don't know what what. <laughs> It, it it is really strange times. It, I, I will say when when the pandemic broke, I was happy to say that the board really banded together. Uh, the town of Hempstead never shut down. We stayed open the entire time because government has to stay open. You know, your garbage has to get picked up. Your water has to be maintained. Your, you know, everything we do. Uh, and we we did it. We worked creatively uh, with places like our building department uh, during the height of the pandemic. We literally within about a month went from having to walk in. To, you can now do it online. Um, right. You know, it was funny when 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 the other towns were doing drive throughs for taxes. I was like, oh, we did that a decade ago. This is great. You know, <laughs> we found a way. And when initially when the testing was the issue, we actually were the first in New York State to come up with a mechanism for a mobile unit. And we teamed up with uh, uh, South Shore, uh, NASA South Shore mm-hmm. Hospital. And it, and it was great where we were driving uh, at that time, the bus to different locations because some people could get tested and 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 they drive. Or other people just don't have that ability, and we recognize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we made a commitment that we would transform that into what we called the Vaxmobile when the when uh, the the vaccines were available, and it was a great and has been a great success. Where you know what, some people could go to the hospital. There are people who were in apartments. There are people who are bedridden. We were able to go out to, to various communities and we did it together. And and one person in particular that I, I I worked incredibly closely with this was was my deputy supervisor, Dorothy Goosby. You know, it's funny. I, I say Dorothy, is, I'm a Republican. Dorothy is a Democrat. I asked her to be the deputy supervisor because she's a, a tremendous public official, um, a real advocate. Uh, and she's a she is a uh, you know what? She's a, a friend to me now. You know, she literally is a such a good friend to me on a personal level. Um she she would say to me, Don, you know what? I have an idea. When this becomes a vaccine, I want it to go into the hardest hit communities, which is in my area. I said, great idea. And we did that. Right. And and we, you know, along the way, when the, the vaxes were transitioning off and it was more to medication, 
we we are still utilizing that and going out. And it's funny you talk about right now. It is a little weird out there because you you know you have. I have a friend who called me last night. He's like, oh, you know, I just got my booster the other day, and now I tested positive. Um, there's still a need for it. You know, people are still getting sick from it. Uh, people can choose if they 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 want to get a booster or not. They want to get a vaccine. Um, and if they choose to, we want to help facilitate it for them. If they choose not to, then they choose not to. It's, you know, it's, yep. it's someone's and, and rightfully, I believe it. It's your choice. And that's that's OK. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's been great. We've been able to help thousands of people. Um, and it, as I said, we were the first we were the second in the nation and the first in New York State. And now other entities have have followed followed suit, um, which is great. But and then but we look what other people are doing, you know, not every everybody has the idea themselves and and we're always looking for for things to do and and that's the benefit you know that you see what others are doing and if you can incorporate it you can we did something good others are now incorporating it we're trying to to mimic those areas as well when we see um another entity doing a positive thing if we can incorporate that in the town right right well i think part of the perception is that um you know this is a one time thing people don't realize that th- this is nature and this is going to keep happening to some degree uh, all over. Uh, anyway, let me do this uh, first. Uh, you're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name's Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Town of Hempstead Supervisor Don Clavin. One of the, I, I had a discussion with um, Gina Saliti, um lawmaker, that, uh, and we, we started to talk uh, to some degree about, um, you remember, well, you, did, have you lived on Long Island? You come from Long Island as a kid. Valley Stream, okay. you know, on born and bred. That's that's where I was raised. Okay, so, so we got some. I common- went to Anconas, and that's uh, you know, that's that's where I'm from. We got some. We got some common ground there. Then you remember as a kid going to the beach, absolutely. Um, and after a rainstorm, there may have been an advisory that you know maybe you might not want to go into water, but but there, but it was never a you can't. It was never a you can't go in. Nowadays, I don't think people realize. That if there's a police tape up there or there's somebody telling you not to go in the water, if you do, you can be arrested for not listening to. And part of that, I think, stems from the idea that uh, at one time, rainwater just used to go back into the bay. And then an edict came out that it all had to be treated. And so we only have, I think it's 13 wastewater treatment plants in the tri-state area. That extra volume of water changed the landscape as far as... Because now, after a rainstorm, you go to the beach and you're told you can't go in the water. It's not a suggestion. Um, and But most of us that grew up on Long Island, we were never confronted with that. Um, yeah. now, and this is an issue. Uh, um, I, it saddens me to think that all of Long Island can't go in the water after a rainstorm. I mean, it seems, how did we get there? You know, um, I don't know what we can do about that. You know what? I'll tell you, you know, we've we've had minimal instances in the town where we've had to tell people not to go to our town beaches. They they can't go back in the water. It's, it's generally not for water. It's for 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 you know, our, our finned friends who like to bite people um, oh. when it comes. <laughs> yeah, to the well, other sharks, area, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah, that, yeah, when you're told not to go in the water with sharks, don't go in the water. But, yeah, but right. I'll tell you what you see is you're right. It's after a significant rainfall. There are there are some primary locations due to bacteria being in the water mm-hmm. that they tell people that they cannot go swimming at that time. Um, you know, it, it's a, it is it's sad. Um, but I will say you are seeing a lot of treatment of water now. You're seeing the discharges being moved uh, because maybe what what was happening 50 years ago, they didn't recognize the, mm-hmm. the, the well, ramifications. Well, I and, think. And- I think look, look at what they're doing. The county's now doing the discharge uh, down from Cedar Creek right. uh, to uh, to a different location. I'm I'm fascinated with the project. You know, from micro tunneling to everything else along the way, that'll help alleviate it in this region. And I think our friends in Suffolk County, who I see a little bit more closings than than in Nassau, are aware of that too. And uh, you know, from the great town supervisors out there and the county executive, I think they're working well um, to to try and alleviate. But but it is funny, you know, like you know we. I hate to say this. we take it for granted sometimes. Like oh. we have sewers. I always grew up with a sewer. I didn't know what a septic tank was until right. you know. Uh, you know, I I got a little older because I was like, oh, we have sewers. And my friend's like, no, I have a septic tank. And then you say, well, that what what happens? Well, that's leaching into the waters, you know. And and in Suffolk County, they're trying to address that by 
making significant investments into sewers to get people out of these septic tanks right. to help alleviate so they could treat the water. To, it, it's going to take a while. It's expensive. But I think people are actually focused on what you're talking about is, you know what, getting to a point where our waterways are clean, mm-hmm. our waterways are accessible, and we found a way to to to, to keep bacteria. Uh, and and chemicals out of our out of our swimming waters as well as our drinking water. Well, just to you know to clear to be clear for the listening audience, um, my understanding of this is that the the water volume would double or triple during a heavy rainstorm, and part of the problem is that the wastewater treatment plants can't deal with that much water. So, along with that rainwater, wastewater goes over the wall because that plant has been over and. So we basically created the issue by deciding that all that rainwater should be treated. Now, definitely with the Great South Bay and, uh, you know, you, you have nitrogen problems, you have, you know, um, and I don't think it's going to be any time soon when p- people stop fertilizing their lawns. And, you know, we have this incessant thing about green around the house, you know, okay, um, that that's fine, but these are the you know ramifications of doing that. Um, so it was you know, treating all of that rainwater that, that gave us this condition. But what you say, you know, people are uh, attempting to, to figure it out. Um, but it's a scary thought, you know, if, if this is going to be the condition. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And, but I will tell you, you know, it's, I think the mindset of people, um, they're aware of it and they want to take steps. I've seen more people probably in the last decade go to chemical free lawns, uh-huh. Um, to monitoring the products they're using because they care about the, it, it, look it's not their their environments they care about their environment they care about their waterways they want clean water you know they want to get the one four dioxane out of their their drinking water yeah. they're making the investment um, I think it's it's been an education project mm-hmm. um, not only with the towns with the counties um, and our great environmental groups that we work with throughout our south shores and in this township that people are aware of it what one of my favorite things that we do in the town I always have love this is we do a program uh, called Stop, Stop Throwing Out Pollutants. People generally mm-hmm. grew up and they would, I, I, firsthand, they throw everything in the garbage. Everything goes in the garbage, yep. Yeah. yep, yep. So we do these programs where people can bring old paint cans, old you know varnishes, whatever. We have, they bring them down to the facility. We take them out of their car and they're processed in a way that it doesn't affect the environment. Mm-hmm. And look, it, they can get crowded at times. Yeah. And you've never seen hundreds of people smiling, waiting on a line. I'll have people who will say like, oh, I had to wait for a little line. But you know what? This is such a great program. We're, we're doing this the right way. People have a willingness. People, right. they, and they love it. They embrace it. Uh, and and those programs, we've expanded them. We've expanded now to to paper. We've expanded, you know, to, you know, to, to tire everything. And people love it. They, there is a desire to, to, and a willingness to want to take care of our island. Right. And you know what? We're facilitating that. The other towns, the counties are. Uh, and people are embracing it. So I think in the next decade, you're going to see a transition to to a benefit of our waters. You're going to see that change, uh, you know, from from let it be treatment. But when people are it's almost the when you see people spraying chemicals on lawn, they're now the bad neighbor. Yeah, they're, right. They're, people are more like, I want to do it in a natural way that benefits my lawn that keeps it green. Yeah. But also benefits the environment. And that mindset is totally here. Yeah. It's too bad. Rock gardens didn't become fashionable, you know, (laughs) (laughs) it's a little tough to play ball. You could just set it up and leave it alone. You don't have to cut it every week. You don't have to do anything, you know, (laughs) um, we have a, Oh, I guess we have a minute or two left. Um, anything, anything else that's going on with you right now that you, uh, want to talk about or, you know what? I would just tell people, you know, go visit the town website. Uh, we we do a lot of activities year round. Uh, this weekend, uh, we're teaming up with the uh, the indoor Riptide Lacrosse team. We're having a town of Hempstead night, but in the afternoon, we are having uh, training by the players to kids in the communities, both boys and girls, about lacrosse. Wow. In February, we're teaming up with the Long Island Nets uh, for for clinics. Uh, you know, during President's Week, where you know parents can bring their kids down, uh, they can get uh, basketball skills from the players. Uh, you know, working with my good friend Kate Murray, we're, we're having, of course, our traditional uh, renew your vows on uh, on, Fe- on Valentine's oh, Day. Right. And I would just right. tell your listeners, there's always something going on in the town, yeah. and I personally think we're a fun place. Um, go check out the 
the, our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, see what's going on. Um, you know what, uh, from our senior centers uh, to, to our, 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 even our ecological programs we do during the winter, there's a lot to do. Uh, and trust me, uh, take the time and come join us because, because we want you to, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's great. Sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and I don't think, you know, uh, I was going to ask you too, is there a, uh, when people want to, um, you know, look into their taxes and whether they can, is there a website that they can go to, to get they, information? They, they got a couple of combinations. You know, the county does your assessment. You go to the county assessor's webpage, our receiver of taxes, Janine Driscoll. Um, she does these tax forms. I, I think she's got like 40 of them scheduled in the winter, both day and night. She does them at schools, at libraries, at town hall, uh, where people can come on down, hear about their taxes, have a discussion about it, and show how to challenge it. Uh, and like I said, she's 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 a dynamite public official, um, and she's holding forums January, February, all the way through March to challenge your assessment. Again, uh, it's on the town website. You can come on down, and she oh, can answer great. your questions. Very good. Yeah. I don't think people are aware of um – what conditions or whatever would lead them to being able to get a tax abatement? You know, if you live near a park and there's extra traffic in there, that yep. is one of the things that can bring your taxes down because you're yep. being bothered by people visiting the park. Um, Bill, that is that is such a uh, there, uh, Bill. That is a great point. I'm glad you're saying it. There are factors that contributed to your assessment. Now, on the flip side, for some reason, I don't, I don't. I, but if you live in a corner, you're paying a fortune in property taxes because. They, they, they slam you on it. Right. But you're right. If if you abut the, um, a major highway, that can be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? That's why you protect yourself. You challenge your assessment. Right. As I said earlier, the worst that happens, the worst is you if get they, denied. They, they don't say turn no. around and say, we're going to punish you for challenging. They it's, don't do that. Exactly. So you got everything to gain, nothing to lose. And by the way, do it yourself because it's not that complicated. Yeah, right, right. Well, but, but, but again, we don't know the specifics of it. And as soon as we learn those... Well, then we would all be golden, you know. It's like Listen, I, I, I had this, and I still talk to her. Really nice woman. She's ninety two now. Uh, she came to my farm like a decade ago. She she would come to to them all the time because we try and make it a little more. We make it fun, and she challenges her assessment every single year. And she she would she would she stands up and she says, "I'm ninety two. Uh, I do it myself. If I can do it, so can you." And it, she's the best spokesperson for the project. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for her. I think we should yeah. all, you know, we should all challenge it. If yep. Better the money in your pocket than in somebody else's. Of course, you're going to spend it anyway. <laughs> you know, you're going to spend it, but at least you'll spend it on Long Island, and that's what we need. You know what? We're going to continue next week, and yep. and we'll get into all kinds of stuff. But anyway, uh, my guest today has been Town of Hempstead Supervisor Don Clavin. Uh, we still have do have a lot to talk about, uh, and Don has been nice enough to come back for another 30 minutes next week so we can continue the conversation. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, listeners. So the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. Remember, you can listen to us by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're on the radio right here every Friday at 3 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.